Hi, this is Mary from The Daily Cell. Sweaters of elbows tend to wear thin and sometimes wear a hole completely out. So how do you fix the sweater elbow and still get a few years out of your sweaters? Well, it's simple and this video is going to show you how. So I tried a few different ways to do this and I found that the best way for me and for the look I was trying to achieve was a double patch. And that is simply where I put a patch on the inside of the sleeve in order to stop the hole from growing and to add some darning stitches to kind of beef up those worn down fibers. And then I put a patch on the outside in order to cover up my darning and to prevent further wearing down of this area because no matter what Miss Manner says, elbows still rest on the surfaces. Of course, you don't have to cover up your mending at all. You may show it off and I'm gonna show you a couple ways that you can do that and still mend the elbow area. So if you're ready, let's go. So this is the hole in the sweater I'm patching and it has some worn out area around it as well. And that's why the double patch, one underneath to keep the hole from growing and beef it up and one on top to prevent future wear. So this area of the garment is stretched out because that's where your body bends at the elbows. The best way to get the fibers to recover is to apply some steam. Just about hover that iron about two inches above the sweater. Don't place it directly onto the sweater and give it a burst of steam. Now you can see it's kind of gotten back into shape. So now you can see the hole a little bit better. So this area of a garment, and also being a knit garment, it needs to bend. So therefore using knit fabrics to patch a sweater is not a bad idea. And you don't have to go out and buy anything. You can use an old t-shirt, or you can use an old sweater. And remember, don't be concerned about it matching because either you're showing off your mending or you're covering it up. Or you could use an old sock that you've lost the match to. You just simply cut out a piece and use it as a patch. It'll be soft against the wearer's skin. So this first patch is going underneath the sleeve. So you need to turn your sweater wrong side out in order to put the patch in place over the hole or the worn out area. You don't have to necessarily have a hole here. And I'm gonna use a knit fabric because it stretches and it doesn't unravel. And you just simply place it over, make sure you're covering everything you want to cover and pin it down in place. Now, if you have it too big, you can go back later and trim off the excess. You do have to sew this down with hand stitches and you're gonna sew starting around the perimeter and then you're gonna make little rows back and forth across it in order to strengthen the weakened fibers in that area. Now this is something you have to do by hand because by machine, the narrow sleeve doesn't fit underneath the needle there unless you're gonna sew both layers together and that's not much of a sleeve, is it? So you have to do it by hand. I did try machine darning and it was such a pain. It was really hard to get that needle to fit in that tight space and I ended up with a big mess that I had to take out half the stitches anyway. So go ahead and just do it by hand and you'll actually save yourself some time. Once you've got the patch sewn down around the perimeter and maybe you have a couple ro other rows there then if you have a hole you're going to need to stitch that hole down to the fabric underneath and that'll prevent the hole or keep the hole from growing so I'm going to go ahead and I've stitched around the hole on uh, like the perimeter of the hole almost a little bit out and then I'm going to stitch the hole down in place so it doesn't continue to grow. Now you could use matching thread and matching fabric and leave it here like this or you could use contrasting everything and leave it here like this or you can use contrasting like I did just so you could see it on the camera but I am going to cover mine up. So again, you've sewn around the perimeter and then you've sewn the hole down in place in case you have a hole. Now, I'm gonna make a patch to cover it all up, but you, of course, do not have to. So for patch fabric, for the outer patch fabric, you can continue to use knit. This again is a, a long underwear t-shirt. It won't unravel and it bends nicely and you could just put it on there, cut it out whatever shape you want and just put it on there, sew it down nice. But you can also use woven fabric like a flannel or cotton or anything you happen to have. But you're gonna have to treat the edges. See how it unravels there? 
So you can either fold the edges down about a quarter of an inch, fold them to the underside, press the down, press down the fold, and then apply the patch onto the sweater. That keeps everything clean. You just have to cut the patch a little bit bigger than you actually need it so you have the room to fold it under. Or you could simply take a zigzag, machine zigzag stitch, and go around all the edges, matching thread or not, that's up to you, and that'll take care of the edges as well. Now this linen is, makes, is very unravely. Flannel wouldn't do that as much. This is a scrap of ultra suede. It also doesn't unravel, and I could simply cut out the shape I need and pin it, I mean, and sew it down in place. This is a thin ultra suede. Ultra suede comes in many thicknesses, but I'm still gonna need to use a thimble. The thin stuff, I can get the needle through pretty well, especially a thin needle, but the thick stuff, it was impossible. I did try that also on a different sweater. That didn't work. I also have some wool here, and this is felted wool. Simply felted wool, so again, it doesn't unravel. It's smooth, it's soft, it bends easily. It's kind of thin, it would make a great patch. Again, you could just cut it out and put it down, not worry about the edges. Of course, there's different options as well other than this traditional type of patching. For instance, you could use a contrasting fabric, something nice and bright, show it off. You could use a different shape. You could cut any shape you want, that would work. You could use a ready-made patch as well, something small like that or even something larger and more dramatic. There's many clever ways you could cover up your darning if you choose to. You could go with a more plain patch and instead of sewing it on so it disappears, sew it on with embroidery floss and a bold blanket stitch or running stitch, or you could darn it on with contrasting stitches in a different way. The contrasting thread could also be not just necessarily over the patch, but even just to sew the edges of the patch down if you wanted to do it that way. So there's a lot of options that you can use. In order to make the patch, first we need to measure the area and including our darning stitches. If you're gonna make a second patch to match on the other side, start with a paper pattern so that way you can get two identical patches. And then double check that your pattern actually covers the area that you want. So I've cut out my patch and I'm ready to sew it down. Place it on, get a good placement, and yep. Oh yeah, I like to take this side seam here, this sleeve seam, and make sure it is lying flat. It is neither curled to the top nor curled under. And that way I can really make sure I'm getting a good placement. And because I'm putting one on the other sleeve, I can get a good measurement of how far over it is from the edge. Then you're gonna pin it on, and this might be hard at first. You might have to pin through the both layers of the sleeve at first, and then you can adjust it by putting your hand inside the sleeve and repinning. Now, I started with four pins, which was not enough when I started to sew because the patch kept moving along. So again, to get that second patch on the other sleeve to line up, first of all, make sure both sleeves are facing the same direction. You've got the back up, and here you can see a little better on this previous sweater I did earlier. I've lined up the cuffs, and I lined up that seam down the sleeve, and I make sure that the second patch is going to be the same distance as the first patch. And I check at the cuffs, I check at the side seam, I check at the lower edge of my patch, and I check at the upper edge of my patch to see how far over I need to place the second patch. You just keep checking and adjusting, checking and adjusting. Okay, now it's time to sew the patch down. And I use a whip stitch. That's simply getting the needle to come up from the sweater through the patch and then back down over the edge of the patch and into the sweater. When I go into the sweater, I pick up a little bit of the sweater, I come out through the patch, and then I'm gonna go back over the edge of the patch and down into the sweater. If you're really good, you'll always come up the same distance from the edge of the patch. This is why I use matching thread so you cannot tell that my stitches are not perfect. And you just go around the outside edge of the entire patch. 
much. And that's all you have to do. All right, we're done. That was not too hard. And I've got two matching patches in the same place on both sleeves, and that way everyone is symmetrical. Um, this is the one I have reinforced on the inside where the hole was. You can't see that from the outside, but there's the reinforcement there, keeping that hole from growing and keeping that area from wearing out in, any faster. And yeah, that was an easy project and now I've got a few more years wear out of this sweater and I don't have to put the time, money, or energy into finding a replacement. By the way, you can use this patch method on any place on your sweater should you find a hole there. Well, I hope you found this video helpful. If you have any questions, please put them in the comments below and I'll be sure to reply. If you like the video, give it a thumbs up. I always appreciate it. Thank you so much for watching. Goodbye.